Hello, people. Hey, everybody out there in the online world. This is Shalapi here. And just wanting to show you guys this cool view before I share the word that I have. Can you guys see all of that? I was going to do this cool event. Pray that my earrings don't fall over because that would be the end of my earrings. Can you see that? Isn't that fun? Isn't that awesomeness? And like way, way over there. Anyways, <clears throat> hey everybody. I hope you're having a fabulous, fabulous Sunday. I am. I've had a glorious weekend. Hi, Auntie. Um, so I have a word for you, and I'm going to try and go through it um, really quickly. Um, God has given me something to share that I really feel like is a now word. This word I'm about to share is going to set some people free. <laughs> it's really, really, really going to set you free. Um, and it's a topic that... Uh, I have, I don't want to say avoided, but I hardly ever, if, in fact, in the history of me preaching, which I started my start, uh, started my traveling ministry in 2016, I don't think I've ever talked about this. Um, so you guys are, are getting to hear me talk about it for the first time. And it's not a topic that I am afraid of or, or, you know, intimidated by. It's just, it's just one of those things that I didn't really feel like it needed attention. You know and it's about women in ministry it's like I just I just decided to step out and do what God called me to do and I never focused really biblically my position what I believe in what I feel about women in ministry and I won't go into the whole thing of like their experiences and how they're treated in the church I'm not gonna address that aspect of it I just want to talk about what I believe my biblical posture about women in ministry from the perspective of the Word of God so Anyways, um, as people join in, they'll just, you know, receive this word, and I just know it's going to bless you. So, let me straight out, out of the gate, you know, you know me, I'm always on fire. I'm like, I don't do things the way normal people would. I want to go after, and hopefully you guys can hear me okay, because obviously you can tell I'm outside, so a little bit of background noise, but hopefully you can hear me. Um, hi, Morgan. Hey, girl. Way to work it at the University of Joy Conference this weekend. Appreciate you. Um, I want to go after the controversial first verse right away because it's like, let's just not beat around the bush. <laughs> Why is it that some people have said that women shouldn't be in ministry or women shouldn't preach or that's not their place? You know, all those things that if you're a woman or even if you're a man watching me, you've heard those comments. And um, so today, it's a thing that's been on my mind, but today I actually went into the Word of God and I said, Lord, show me your heart about this topic, right? So, 1 Timothy 2, verse 11, listen to this. It says, let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. Wow, <laughs> that, you know what I mean? That sounds like he just shut it down for women, right? That's what it would sound like if you don't understand the grace of God, if you don't see the word of God through the lens of grace, okay? One marker, one test that I can always give you about the word of God is anytime I read something, I always have to keep in mind the Father's heart. If it doesn't sound like freedom, if it doesn't sound like the Father's heart, I check it. Because one thing I've learned about God, and I've been saved for 16 years, one thing I've learned about Jesus Christ is this. He does not put people into bondage. So anytime you hear a preaching, a teaching, a doctrine, whatever, if it, if it puts you in prison, if it makes you feel like you're in bondage, if it makes it, you feel like you're inferior because of your gender or the color of your skin or your nationality or what nation you're from, if it ever makes you feel inferior, it's not the Spirit of Christ. So you can hear a verse like this and be like, oh my goodness, I thought Paul was a preacher of, of grace. He just shut it down for all women. He just said women have to be silent and they cannot teach a man. Until I started to investigate through the Holy Spirit and then um, I looked up that word. You remember what he says? I do not allow a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. So I looked up that word authority. And do you know what it means? Check this out. In the Greek, it's authenteo which I'm not a Greek scholar, but that's how I would pronounce it. Authenteo means 
listen to this, self-appointed acting without submission to take up arms against, okay? Strong's Concordance says it means one who usurps authority over another. So when you understand the real meaning behind what Paul is saying, I agree with Paul. I wouldn't allow, based on the definition of this word, authenteo in the Greek, I wouldn't allow a woman to usurp someone else. I wouldn't agree for a woman to take up arms against somebody else in the church. I wouldn't agree for someone to have self-appointed authority. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I think a lot of times people have to do further study to understand the author's heart. And they have to go to Holy Spirit, who's the real author of the word, to say, Holy Spirit, what did, what did Paul really mean when you inspired him to write this? So that's the first thing you have to understand is that Paul is saying in 1 Timothy 2, I don't want women usurping authority. And I'm in full agreement with that because that's not kingdom. That's not the kingdom of God. Now, let's go to another, I would say maybe the second most controversial. I'm just going after all the controversial ones. It's like, no, it's like, let's get it out of the way. Let's talk about it. It's like people have these questions, they have their opinions, but no one is talking about it. So let's just go ahead and see what the scripture has to say. The, the scriptures that talk about women in church and let's deal with it. Because in 1 Corinthians 14 from verse 34, Paul says this. He says, let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive as the law also says. And if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is shameful for women to speak in church. Oh my gosh, that sounds like another situation where Paul is shutting it down for women to minister. Is that really what he's saying? Or is that what people have told us what he's saying? And have you used that scripture? Listen, do not allow people to use the Bible to put you in bondage. <laughs> the Bible says we are now under law, we are under grace. So listen, for those of you who watch my video about how to study the Bible, how to do good study Bible, how to study the Bible in a good way, if you haven't watched that video, go. I recommend that you watch it. I think it's on my Facebook ministry page. I talk about when you study the Word of God, you have to take every verse in context of the chapter and every chapter in context of the whole book. Otherwise, you're going to miss the heart of the author. You're going to miss what God was trying to say to his people back then and what he's trying to say to us today. Because the context of 1 Corinthians 14 is not about women's rights or women's limitations or women's imprisonment. The context of 1 Corinthians 14 is order in the church. The context of 1 Corinthians 14 is prophecy in the church and order in the church. It's not about putting women in prison. Because if you read, like I read to you verse 34 and 35, if you go on to read the rest of that chapter, listen to this. He said, therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Okay, one minute he's telling women to be silent. Next minute he's saying desire to prophesy. Well, if I'm a woman, how can I prophesy if I don't talk? So, it must mean, it stands to reason, that that word speak and that word prophesy, it's not the same words. So what Paul is trying to address with the women in verse 35 and 34 is not the same thing he's addressing in verse 39. He's not telling women that they cannot prophesy. He's not telling women that they cannot minister. He's talking about women having conversation when the Spirit of God is moving in church that does not have to do with kingdom that does not have to do with what god is saying in that moment and in that context i do agree with paul i do believe that there's some type of conversation that is best had at home with your husband that the church when when god is is moving through people with tongues and interpretation of tongues that's not the time for you to bring up gossip about miss Susie and and how she bought god this money and all this gossip and stuff we talk about paul is saying it's not the time for that let everything be decently and in order. So what Paul is trying to address in the church is order. Because otherwise he's contradicting himself in verse 39 when he says, you know, don't don't forbid people to speak in tongues and don't make sure that they desire to prophesy. I'm not going to be able to prophesy and I cannot speak in tongues if you're telling me to be quiet. So he's addressing two different things, okay? So straight out the gate, we've handled 1 Corinthians, 1 Timothy 2, excuse me, and we've handled 1 Corinthians 14. Now, this one I just love. I just love. Titus 2, verse 3. I found the scripture today. When I saw this, I was like, yes, yes. Just, I mean, drop the mic. <laughs> drop the microphone. Titus chapter 2. I always have a hard time. Do you ever have a hard time finding like specific 
chapters of the Bible, you know. I'm one of those people too, that's like, I would just refuse to use a page, uh, table of contents. Not that you shouldn't use a table of contents, but I'm just like, no, I'm going to find it. <laughs> Spirit of God, tell me where it is. But hold on, I know where it is. It's after, it's after. It's just such a short book that it's always hard to find. Okay, Titus chapter 2. Listen. Okay, so again, this is another one of Paul's letters where he's trying to bring order and structure to the church. You have to understand, this is the first century early church. They don't have a copycat. They don't have another model to go by. So the apostles and the prophets are helping these people to develop structure to understand how to do church, how to do the body of Christ, how to do kingdom. So he's trying to give them wisdom, sound wisdom, words of wisdom on how to structure these things. And so verse 1, he's talking, he's, he's telling his, uh, his son in the Lord, his disciple Titus, um, he says in verse 2, The older men should be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. Then verse 3 says, The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not given to much wine. And listen to this, teachers of good things oh come on i'm just gonna stop right there make sure admonish the older women to do what to be teachers of good things but paul i just thought you said in first timothy 2 that you don't you want the women to be in silence and you don't allow them to teach a man or to have authority over a man but here he says admonish the older women to what to be teachers of what good things so when you come to Outreach for Everyone or come to one of our conferences, you are going to find women who are teaching people good things. Good things such as healing, such as the prophetic, how to prophesy, how to minister to the sick, teaching people who, what their identity is Christ, in Christ is and who they are, what God has called them to do, teaching them how to win souls, teaching them how to advance the kingdom of God. What is that qualified as? Teachers of good things. We are teaching people good things. So I think that fits into what Paul is saying here in Titus 2 3 he says it with his own mouth so you have to understand that with these different churches and the different spiritual sons that Paul was writing to he was addressing different issues that that particular gathering needed to address he wasn't putting people in bondage because as a matter of fact if you study and I won't turn there right now but if you want to you can go to Philippians chapter 4 verse 2 to 3 where Paul is talking and he's He's uh, encouraging the people in Philippi. He says, I want to write concerning my, my friends. Um, you, I can't pronounce it really well. It's two women in there. Euodia and Sintich, something like that. Euodia and Sintich. He said, these women have been my fellow workers in the gospel. They have, they have worked side by side. He didn't even say, oh yeah, they, they did my laundry, they used to cook for me. He said, no, they labored side. So wherever Paul was preaching, these two women were there. Whatever, whatever persecution Paul was experiencing, this woman, these two women were experiencing it with him. He said, they labored with me side by side in the gospel. So admonish them to get along with each other. That's what Philippians 4 says. You go read it, verse 2 and 3. So how can the same Paul who says women should be silent in church, they shouldn't teach, come around and say, oh yeah, I had these two women working with me in the ministry. They were serving God in the gospel. Hey, Monica. Bless you, girl. So so I think, I think I've given you a lot of, of proof from the Bible that we have to take all these scriptures in context and we mustn't allow people... Uh, to put us in bondage in the New Testament in a season where we're experiencing the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. But just in case you needed more proof, let me tell you this. In Joel chapter 2, verse 29, this, that's the famous verse that um, Peter quoted. When the, when, when the, remember when they were in the upper room and the you know tongues of fire came and people were speaking in tongues and the whole city around heard them and they thought they were drunk with wine and the Bible said all of a sudden Peter rose up and says these people are not drunk with wine as you, su you suppose now look he says from uh, from verse 28 of Joel chapter 2 he says and it shall come to pass afterward that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So God specifically, and I, you know what? This is New King James I'm reading, but I really love this translation in the ESV, the English Standard Version, because it says, 
on my male servants and on my female servants, I will pour out my spirit. So God calls it out. He says distinctly, this is a promise I'm sending you. I'm going to pour out my spirit on male servants and female servants. So not just one. So if you belong to a church and a ministry where only the men are serving God, only the men are prophesying, something is wrong. I'm sorry, I hate to be the one to bust out. I'm not just saying this because I'm a woman. I'm saying this because I'm a believer in Christ. I'm scriptural and I'm biblical. And scripturally, the Bible said <laughs> that he will pour out his spirit upon men servants and, and maid servants and they will both prophesy. So if the women, I don't know, somebody's watching and they need a word. You need to empower the women in your church. You need to empower the women in your ministry. Because if only 50% of your ministry is prophesying and moving in the spirit of God, you only have half of the Bible. You only half in the will of God. <laughs> you, you need to get in the other half, the 100% of the will of God. He says, on my sons and my daughters. Now, I'm not an English scholar, but the last time I checked, daughters is a female term. Specifically talking about women. Specifically talking about women. And I'm done. I close. I close with this. I want to close with Matthew 28. I'm going to I'm going to lay the bomb now. I'm going to say something bold. I usually don't preach this boldly, but like I said, I know that there are women watching me who are going to be set free by this. I remember I prophesied. I was trying to remember who I prophesied to, but I prophesied to this woman about being called to do ministry for 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 women. Like she's called to minister to women, and I could just see on her face like it is it was something that had been stalled and blocked. And there are women that God is calling to do the work of the Lord, but they have been stalled and they have been blocked. And I just want to empower and give women courage let me tell you everything that god is doing by my life in my life is by grace it's by grace but it's also i think part of it is a tenacity that i got from my parents my mom and my and my siblings because my mom is a retired um and i'm not boasting in my family i'm boasting the lord but my mom is a, a retired professor in economics my dad before he passed was a retired microbiologist he was the first microbiologist in all of our country which is nigeria i have a sister who's a, a certified chattered accountant i have you know what i mean i have another sister who's a manager so it's like i i didn't even realize how much just the environment i grew up in was so empowering i don't know how to not be awesome and and then that was before christ but then after i received christ and I received the Spirit of God. Then I was even more empowered. I was like, oh my God, God loves me. My sins are washed away. I can. I was serving God. I hadn't even been saved. I don't think I've been saved a year before I started serving in my church. Like really serving. Serving Sunday morning, serving Wednesday night. They put me in like two or three departments like right away. Because I was just, all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, I get to work for God. So if you have a heart to serve God, I want to encourage you, being a woman, don't let people put you in bondage because of scriptures that they don't understand or scriptures that you don't understand. So I close with Matthew 28. Listen, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but the, the Matthew 28 is about the resurrection of Jesus. Mary Magdalene and the Bible says the other Mary have gone to the tomb to anoint his body with oil. All of a sudden they show up. The angel of the Lord is there. And the angel of the Lord says in verse 7, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. And then verse 8, So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word and as they went to tell his disciples behold jesus met them saying rejoice so they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him verse 10 then jesus said to them everybody say jesus said to them so this is a commandment from god G then jesus said to them do not be afraid go and tell my brethren to go to galilee and there they will see me so Jesus tells these two women to go and preach the good news. That sounds like an evangelist to me. <laughs> so anybody that tells a woman not to preach, not to serve God, not to proclaim the good news, that person is against the will of Jesus Christ. And I know that's a bold statement, but I just read it to you in the Bible, Matthew 28. He tells these two women, go and tell the good news. Well, I have good news for you today. God is on your side. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to let anybody intimidate you or put you in a prison. You Be yourself. That's what the Lord is telling this season of my life. Just be yourself. Who you are in Christ is enough to give away to people. Like me, you see me here. I like to wear my dresses. I like to wear my, my, my skinny jeans cut up and my red lipstick. I'm just myself. 
I may not look or sound or dress like other people, but I have discovered that God is able to use me even with me just being my personality. I don't have to, I don't have to give up who I am and my taste and, and how I like to dress in order to fit into a mold. Because sometimes people are like, well, yeah, we, we want God to use you. We believe God can use you, but you have to fit into a particular fold, mold that we have. You have to conform like a cookie, one of this man of God that I love so much, Prophet Gorgeous, he used to say that we're not called to be cookie cutter. You know, like when you're baking cookies and it's the same cookie over and over again, like ginger cake, ginger cake, you know what I mean? You got this whole row of cookies. That's not how, that's not how God made us in his kingdom. Be yourself. And the other reason why I titled this video, The End of Religion, is because we have to realize that people are not even responding to the old way that people, um, demonstrated Christianity. The young people, they're not responding to religion. They're not responding to people coming with a form of godliness that doesn't have power because they're trying to suit what people want. But when you can be yourself and and carry yourself the way you, you believe that the Lord has called you to carry yourself and show people that yes, I can be a woman, I can be young, I can be, maybe you're a woman in your 50s. Like you're a woman in your 50s and you still love to rock the high heels or whatever, and rock your high heels, it's okay. Be yourself. Because most likely there's somebody else out there watching you and when they see you stepping into your uniqueness and still serving God, they're going to be encouraged and inspired to believe they can do the same. And the woman who did that for me was Mama Heidi Baker. I don't know how many of you know her. If you don't know her, you should look her up. Awesome woman of God. She came to the city that I live in, in Austin. This was about eight years ago. And I'm hearing about all these signs and wonders that God is using her to do in Mozambique, Africa. And I'm looking at her and she's this, this like little short blonde haired lady, cut her hair, you know, loves to wear makeup. She's wearing pants and I was just looking at her like, oh my God, I am free. I'm like, give us free, you know what I mean? The fact that God was using her and she's like, she wears pants and she likes to wear makeup. She's just talking about just being herself. But God is using her to like open deaf ears and take care of the poor and they're having revival in Mozambique. It just set me free. And from that point on, I was like, I am not living in anybody's religious idea of what a woman should look like or what a woman in ministry should be like. God loves me the way that I am. He's not offended by my pants. He's not offended by my lipstick. He's not offended by my hair. He loves me. And he told Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, he said, go and tell my disciples. Go and be a teacher of good things. So with that word, I bless you guys. I hope you have an awesome evening. Listen, remember that Jesus came that you might have life, life in abundance, everlasting life, eternal life, immortal life. Bless you guys.